Have you ever just woken up and decided, hey, I'm gonna spend 20 hours making a 100 days video and auction not included? No? Well, I wish I could say the same, but I pushed myself to see how far I could get in 100 days, and let me just tell you, the end might shock you. So stay tuned, and if you like, consider subbing. So let's get into it. I started off as everybody else does, by shuffling my world till I found something that I liked. Then decided to go with a farmer, a researcher, and a digger as my first duplicates. Poor little guys have no clue what I have in store for them. As soon as I got into the world, I started colonizing the living shit out of it and destroying the environment to build luxury three bed, one bath living establishments. As soon as cycle two started, I plopped down a research station so I could pound out all of the research as soon as possible. Then I had pity in my hearts for my little duplicates, so I began building them a proper bedroom. The real reason is so I can cram more of them little shits together. Speaking of cramming little shits together, we welcome Bubbles to the team. Along with that, Laura had just finished researching her supercomputer, so I moved the whole setup to a better place. Then I noticed the colony was running out of food to eat, so I decided to be generous and build them a farm. Food is a consistent issue in this video. As the colony grew, I had more people to exploit for labor. I started expanding the base and decided it was time to start construction on a water basin, along with welcoming Steve to the team. And then I finished off cycle nine by building a mess hall. I gave the duplicates some time to work on digging and building the basin, and then decided it was time to start a global warming crisis and auction not included. The duplicates were making good progress on the base, continuing to dig, building the basin, and finishing research, along with welcoming Meep to the team. By cycle 17, we had pretty much finished the big water basin, and I saw it time to start rounding up critters for later use, then got ourselves a second researcher, Amari, and began constructing on the base's heat shield. While expanding the base, I decided to move the bathrooms to a better place. Then I invited May to join us in this hellhole, then proceeded to again leave the duplicates to dig and build because that's all they're good for. It has taken them so long to dig everything that I've acquired two new duplicates in the time being. Say hello to Lindsay. As the duplicates were finishing up the heat shield, I began making an airlock so I could begin digging out the whole world without having to worry about temperature, germs, and unwanted gas and liquids getting into the base. Then the big dig happened. I started destroying the entire world and let me just tell you this is always a wonderful feeling the new space and the thermal shield pretty much done i placed on some temporary refinement to get us by for a while then welcomed poor little travaldo to the team then proceeded to make a great hall and new bedrooms because i needed the extra morale for future skills and let me just say i'm very proud of this design with that out of the way i finished up the temporary refinement that the worst thing possible happened bubbles dumbass forgot how to live and die so i made her a little gravestone then immediately began grinding out refined metal then immediately replaced bubbles with nicola along with expanding Expanding the farm to accommodate with the growing population and continuing to destroy the world and claim its resources. Then we welcomed the big man himself. Stinky. With all the digging the duplicates have done, we finally got to our first cool slush geyser, so I quickly started harvesting water from it. Then I proceeded to build the most vital piece of machinery in the game, the oxygen machine. And let me just tell you, this thing is an absolute beast. With the new workload, I saw it fit to bring Marie into the base. But still, since this thing is pretty big and pretty complex, it still took a very long time to build, even with 10 duplicates working constantly on it. So again, I brought in some backup, aka Max. I also noticed that a decent amount of food has been rotting, so I replaced the ration box with some fridges to keep the food better for longer, then put some gas storage under the oxygen machine to hold the extra hydrogen. I was also getting tired of how the toilets were constantly having to be plunged, so I ran some plumbing and hooked up some nice new dookie stations. Then at long last, the oxygen machine was ready to be jump started, so I placed down some coal generators, ran some wire, and installed the ventilation system. But while the duplicates were in building mode, I decided to upgrade the power grid by by placing down more coal generators, adding proper power management, and rewiring everything with better wires. While I was distracted with power, I didn't notice the auction machine was finally up and running, but still working out some of its kinks. Don't worry, it only takes about two cycles for it to correct itself. And since food was still an issue, I figured it was time to get hatch farms started for future barbecue needs. The reason I'm starting so early is because hatch farms take forever to get up and running. As the duplicates finished up the ranches, we started getting really close to that four geyser cluster, and I found out that we had a CO2 geyser, which is amazing for future rocket engines, and a cool slush geyser which is equally as good. I also forgot to put down some incubators to make sure the critter eggs got sorted into the ranches properly, and right after that the duplicates uncovered a chlorine vent which is pretty much useless. Then I decided to place down a grill because I figured the duplicates deserved some nice cooked food. The base was also running low on water, so a water filtration plant was first priority, so I threw one together all half-assed like in the base, and placed down some more incubators so the hatch farms would fill up faster. I also remembered that the only way to get oil on this asteroid is with Drekos, 
Worlds because the oil biome is on a different asteroid. So I built a quick ranch, which went through a lot of redesign. And then I welcomed Berg to the base. The water that was going through the filters was too cold and causing the pipes and machines to break. So I prioritized everything as one and decided to deal with it later. Then I just kind of concentrated on digging. I lost a couple of cycles because my recording software crashed. I didn't really do much though. All I did was finish up the Draco farm, got one of my farms ready for mushrooms and placed down more incubators. See, told you you really didn't miss much. But speaking of doing things, I decided it was time for exosuits. So I placed down a forge, ran power to it and queued up 14 atmo suits while also still destroying the world and taking Dracos from their home and putting them in the cube. We are also lacking the reed fiber needed to make atmo suits. So I hooked up some reed fiber plants to some hydroponic farm tiles to the bathroom so we could get reed fiber and also not have to worry about the polluted water. Then the duplicates detained a steam vent and I also remember not everyone has a bed so I expanded the bedrooms and when I was done with that I decided to pump the water from the steam vent to my base because we're really really getting low on water. Then I had the great idea to use the ice I harvested from the ice biomes to make temperature shift plates to cool down the existing water and also melt the ice to make more water then welcomed Nisbet to the team. Since Nisbet has already had the mechatronics engineer skill I started construction on automatic critter farms to take the eggs to a water pool and drown the extra critters after the incubators have been filled for food. I know it sounds brutal, but it must be done, dude. In the meantime, I started uprooting mealwood to replace with mushrooms because they harvest for more food. And after all this time, we finally got our first glossy dreklet egg. That took a decent amount of time. Also, remember that water filtration system that didn't work? Yeah, me too. I destroyed all of it and replaced it with Atmosuit docks. Then I noticed that the hydrogen tanks were full, so I put down some hydrogen generators to burn the extra hydrogen for the refineries. Then ran lines of oxygen and power to the docks so the dupes could breathe in the suits. It would still be a while before we could use them due to the lack of oxygen production though. Then I noticed that there was way too much carbon dioxide in the base so I threw down a carbon skimmer. Then with the last few cycles I had left I went around the base touching things up here and there and before I knew it we had reached 100 cycles baby. Let me just tell you this video was a challenge. I did a lot of things for the first time like writing and following a script along with a whole different kind of editing but I had so much fun making this video so expect more like it in the future. It was a fun learning curve. It was something fun. I really enjoyed it because it was something way different than the channel has regularly seen and plus it's actually what I consider quality content so yeah so if you enjoyed please consider liking and subscribing and me the world to me and if this video gets 100 likes I'll do a 200 days of video. I hope you all enjoyed and have a wonderful day.